Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Doing a little bit of a different video today and one that I have been so excited to try ever since I saw this challenge. So today I am doing a grayscale black and white color challenge. I am very scared. To be perfectly honest, I'm really, really scared of how this is going to look because my style relies really heavily on smooth, very cohesive colors and very, very often very desaturated colors. So I'm a little scared to go into this one and not be able to see what colors that I'm choosing. That's the basis of this challenge, by the way, is I have, I have picked a random color palette. It's, it's a full spectrum. It's all the colors, I believe, but I have my computer settings. I have set the color mode to grayscale. So I even picked out this palette in the grayscale mode. I have no idea what these colors look like. Um, I have no idea what the palette looks like. The only thing that I can see are the values of the colors. So I'm going to be using this black and white grayscale color palette to color in this piece of mine that I have. I've chosen an already existing piece because I wanted the focus to be on the colors in this challenge. So again, I'm going to use this randomly selected color palette. And again, I have absolutely no idea what these colors look like, but I'm going to use the values of the colors to try and create a somewhat cohesive grayscale piece. And then hopefully when we turn the colors back on, we're going to get a really, really fun surprise. So this is what we're working with right here. This obviously has already been colored. I've actually already posted this piece to my Instagram, but I wanted to work with this one because when I initially colored this piece, I had actually colored it in in grayscale and then adjusted the grayscale to get some colors to kind of see if I could find a technique to help me with my values a little bit more. I don't think it worked too well. It did help me a little bit to understand values, which is basically how light or dark a color is. But I don't think I'm gonna keep this technique up because it was a lot more trouble than it was worth. However, I do think that makes this the perfect piece to try and recolor color in this grayscale challenge. So you can see the full color of this piece. I cannot. My computer's settings have already been set to grayscale. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can kind of see it in the corner here, but it's all black and white. So this is the color palette that I have chosen. Again, I did not see this color palette in color. I have no idea what spectrum this is. Obviously these ones are going to be a lot lighter. These ones are going to be a lot darker and I can get the mid tones from around here. I'm assuming this column is somewhere in like the blues or purples because that's definitely in my mind those are like on the darker side of the color spectrum and then maybe over here we've got the yellows which is more of the lighter side and I'm really really curious if I'm right in that aspect when I play this back I'm very excited to see but first things first let's go ahead and get rid of all the colors on this piece delete those and we have some fresh clean line art all right this is very nerve-wracking I'm gonna go ahead and bring our color palette up um, I'm thinking I might just start with uh, throwing a solid color on to the background, something like that, just so that I can kind of see what I'm doing and I don't have to work on a purely white background. So I'm gonna start with the skin tone here. And as far as values go, I want this character's skin to be a little lighter than their hair. I think I'm gonna do something lighter than this background color so that it stands out against it. I don't wanna go way up here because I do wanna leave some room for highlighting later. I'm gonna try, the other problem is I have no idea what color I've just colored the background. Absolutely no clue and I don't even was, it was somewhere over here, I think. I'm um, gonna go, I'm assuming this is yellow and this is probably red because it's the start of the color spectrum. So I think if I go in this area, I'm gonna get a little bit of a tan orange color. So let's try this one. Okay, I mean, it looks good in grayscale. Hopefully it'll look good in color too. This is my technique for coloring anything is I just do an outline in the color and then I'll fill it in afterwards. I know a lot of people that color with the select tool where they'll actually select the area that they want to be colored and then fill it in that way. And I've tried that before and it's so nerve wracking because I'm certain at any moment I'm going to accidentally deselect something and all of my hard work will be for nothing. So I just find that this method is a lot more reliable for me at least. All right. So I feel as though this color might be a little bit too light. I feel like we're not going to be able to get a good enough highlight on there. So I kind of want to Oh shoot, which color did I even choose? Go a little bit darker here, hopefully. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take that same color. Well, should I? Usually what I do in terms of blush is I will take the same color that I've put down for the skin. I'll get rid of the skin and then I'll draw in the blush and then I will adjust the color of the blush to be a little bit darker and a little bit redder than the skin is. That's usually what works for me when I can see the 
colors, but I can't see the colors on this one, so I don't know if that's gonna be a viable option. I kind of feel like I should just use my usual technique for this instead of trying to force correct. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna do my usual technique and color in the blush separate from the skin and then color adjust it later. And then I'm just gonna move the sliders as I normally would when I'm color adjusting, even though I can't see what I'm adjusting it to. And hopefully we'll get a little bit of a cohesive result. Definitely looks a bit weird right now because I am putting a lighter color down for the blush. But once I adjust the color, it'll look much better. I promise. Just trying to hit all the high points here with the blush. Anywhere where the skin is just a little bit closer to the Bones. So the top of the cheekbones, the knuckles, tips of the fingers, shoulders, stuff like that. And then anywhere that the skin is a little bit thinner as well. So the tips of the ears, the lips, tip of the nose. Those are just the areas that I like to put blush. All right, and then I'm gonna clip it to the skin, color adjust it. And then normally I bring the luminance down, the saturation up a little bit, and then the hue goes left slightly. The hue is what's concerning me though, because I have absolutely no idea if I've picked a skin tone. If I have picked a skin tone, then bringing the hue to the left should put me into the redder category. But if I've picked like blue or something, then bringing the hue to the left might bring me into the green territory, which is not good. <laughs> but that is also kind of the whole point of this challenge. All right, I think that looks pretty good in grayscale, so we're gonna leave it like that. And the next step for me is usually coloring in the face. Now the face for me is the teeth and the whites of the eyes, so I wanna try and get something mostly white, but at the same time, I don't want it to be pure white because I do want to put a highlight on top of everything. <sighs> So it's, it can't be, so I'm assuming it can't be in this top row because that's just gonna be pretty much pure white. So now I'm stuck with the decision of which of these lower two rows do I pick. I think I'm gonna go on the wild side a little bit and pick from over here because I've been using this side for the skin tone so far. So I think if I pick over here, I might get like a blue or something. Hopefully it'll leave a little bit of room for highlighting. But let's go ahead and fill that in. That looks pretty good, pretty good. It's definitely Definitely the correct color that I would choose if I were doing this in color. This is about the the white that I would choose. All right, next color is going to be for the hair, actually. And I did want it a little bit darker than the skin, but I also want to put a bit of a gradient on the bottom of it, so I can't have it too dark. I'm thinking somewhere along these lines. Maybe a little lighter. Eh, there we go. I think that's a good color. Color that in. I'm filming this on a Tuesday, and I've actually just noticed the time. I'm I'm about a half an hour away from when I'm supposed to start stream. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to finish laying down the base colors of this, and then I will come back to it after stream and finish up with the shading. I also turned my air conditioning off so that I could get somewhat decent sound quality on this video, and I'm suddenly feeling very, very warm. It is the 1st of August currently that I am filming this, so we are smack dab in the middle of the heat of summer, and I was hoping hoping to get a little bit of an earlier start, but unfortunately my phone updated in the middle of the night and caused my alarm not to go off in the morning, which just set my whole day behind schedule. Very frustrating. All right, there's the base of the hair, and I just wanna put a little bit of a darker gradient on the bottom, just like that. <sighs> I think actually I'm also going to color the eyebrows in this color as well, this darker color. All right, next step, let's go ahead and do the horns real quick. I'm putting this on the accessories layer is what I call it. And I want to do the horns and the earrings on the same layer, even though they're gonna be different colors. Gonna choose something from, let's do something from over here for the horns. Definitely want it darker than the hair. A um, little darker than that. There we go, that's a good color. Color those in, there we go, beautiful. And I wanna get that that earring as well, just slightly, slightly darker than the skin tone, just so it stands out a little bit. That's good. And then let's actually put this butterfly on the same layer. I want this to be a nice bright color. Right here, maybe? Oh, I have a feeling this is gonna be a very yellow butterfly, because I selected from this row, and I think this row is yellow. There we go. I wanna do the eyes last, so let's go ahead and do sort of the undershirt that he's got on here. And I wanna pick a nice dark color for this. Not as dark as black, because I don't want it to blend into the outline, but it's definitely 
gonna be the darkest color on the page. Go, darker than the horns, beautiful. Ooh, that does look a little black though. Let me go ahead and choose something just a little bit lighter. There we go. And now the sweater. Again, I wanted a little bit on the darker side of the spectrum, but not quite as dark. I'm thinking maybe the same color as the horns, maybe a little bit darker. There we go, that's pretty good. Color this in. Sorry if it feels like I'm rushing. I have to be live in 15 minutes. And I still need to set up for that. Mm, this might be too dark. I don't really want it to blend into the sort of tank straps that he's got underneath. I really want those to be like the darkest point of this piece. Yeah, that might be just a little too dark. So let's choose something a little bit lighter. Uh, a little lighter than that even. There we go. That's a pretty good color. All right, and then last step is the eyes. And the eyes I want to be really Really striking so I'm actually gonna choose a relatively light color for base of them uh, even lighter than that Ooh, less <laughs> darker than that there we go that's a pretty good in between all right and then last step of the coloring process is just to put a gradient on those eyes give, give them a little bit more depth and usually I go for a pretty dark color but it's in the same value scale as the base of the eyes of course now I can't even remember where I picked the eye color from so I'm just gonna have to choose something and hopefully it'll be somewhere in the correct value or not. That's kind of the point of the challenge. I do have, by the way, in case you guys were curious, a how I draw eyes video on my channel. I don't really like calling it a tutorial because one, I don't feel qualified enough to teach tutorials. And two, I think everyone should really be learning their own techniques when it comes to art and developing their own style and way of doing things. So if you wanna follow along with it, great. And use it as kind of like a baseline for how you would like to draw eyes. That's kind of why I put the video up. I didn't put it up to be like, this is how you have to draw eyes. I like to think of my tutorials as kind of like a, here's how I do it. If it's something you like, you could incorporate it into your art, but it's definitely not something you have to do. All right, just clean up those edges a little bit. And that is the flat colors pretty much down. Let's see here, yeah. Flat colors look good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go stream because I am running very late and I will come back to this after stream. I do stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Fridays. Today is Tuesday, which means it's an art stream. So I'm gonna go do that and then I will be right back afterwards to continue the shading on this. All right, see you soon. All right, I'm back to work on the rest of this. Uh, okay, so where did we leave off? With just the flat coloring, which means now we gotta go ahead and start up the shading. Let me get my color palette back here. How I gotta do the shading? Cause usually, usually I shade on a multiply layer and I just do cell shading that way. But if I can't see what color I'm picking, it's gonna look really weird on the multiply layer. Um, well, I already said I didn't really want to stray from my usual creative process. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going with it. And we're gonna go ahead and put the cell shading layer on the multiply blending mode and go from there. Okay, so my normal, I don't can you see my mouse over here? My normal shading shades are these ones over here. This row is blue, this one's purple, and this one's pink. It kind of goes from a cool to warm tone. And then of course we've got like a lighter shading in this column, medium shading and dark shading. So I'm kind of looking for something that's gonna match this medium row. So I'm thinking maybe something close to this, uh, maybe a little lighter. That seems like it's gonna be about right. Let's go ahead and start with the eyes since that's mostly white. Uh, looks like that might be a little dark. Well, only slightly though, only very slightly. Let's try this one. Oh, that might've been even darker. I can't even tell where I'm picking on this damn thing. How about this? Okay, that seems like we're kind of in the right territory, at least as far as when I normally shade. Let's go ahead and get this cell shading on here. Usually when I do cell shading, I've got like a few very specific spots that I make sure that I hit every time. So like the top of the eyes, the inside of the ear, uh, the bottom of the nose, and of course the lips. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's, <laughs> the heat of the day, it's almost seven o'clock right now, which is still very, very hot. It's about 84 degrees out and I cannot have the air conditioning on while I'm filming a video because the 
sound quality is absolutely horrendous. So I've got a little mini fan on me right now, but other than that, I'm really gonna have to be fast about this because otherwise I'm going to boil alive. Not to mention my camera could overheat again. So we're just gonna go very, very quickly and throw this cell shading on everything. Ooh, it looks a little dark on the sweater for some reason. I wonder if that's because it's got a pretty high saturation. Oh, I'm so scared to see what this looks like when we finish. <laughs> like absolutely terrified because I, I know Know what this looks like on the normal piece on the regular colored piece that I showed you at the very beginning but with this grayscale I could be shading with yellow for all I know I'm debating how I want to present this video because even though I can't see the colors I know that the recording is picking them up so I could either edit this video so that you guys can't see the colors either it's also in grayscale or I can leave the colors as is so that you guys can see them and then I'm the only one in the dark whereas you get to see what I'm doing while I'm doing it. And I kind of think my solution to that might be uh, maybe to just edit a YouTube short along with this as well. And that way I can do like the full YouTube piece in the grayscale so you guys are seeing what I'm seeing. And then on the YouTube short, I can maybe edit it so that it's in full color the whole time so that you guys kind of get a unique experience of watching me screw up this drawing in real time. Time, instead of waiting till the end to figure out what it looks like. I think that's what I might do. I'm just gonna do a couple little shading spots here to indicate that there's an arm there. And then I'm gonna be completely honest, I might just do the shading and highlighting for the hair off camera because that does take the longest time. And I wanna go ahead and finish this up as quickly as possible because it is already getting hot in here and I just turned the AC off. So let me just do a couple little cast shadows in here and then we will move on to highlighting. And then I'm gonna shade and highlight the hair off camera. And then I will come back here for the reveal. Oh, I forgot this hand. And then just give a little shading to the butterfly. I am so concerned for how this shading is going to turn out. I feel like the multiply method might have been the wrong direction. It probably would have been more beneficial to color in the shading with a solid color instead of using the multiply method. Well, not much to be done about it now. Oh, wow. Oh, that doesn't even, that doesn't even show up on there. That's concerning. I don't know what that means. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the highlights. Ooh, you know what? So normally the way that I do the highlights is I put it on the screen mode and then I use whatever colors I've already put down on that screen blending mode to highlight those areas. But I feel like it would be a lot more interesting if I just picked the highlight colors. You know what? I'm taking back everything I just said. I'm going to pick a shading color straight up. Let's make it this color. <sighs> wow. Okay. Well, I'm gonna... Ooh. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to individually, it's fine, it's fine. I'm taking back everything that I said about wanting to do this um, as I normally would, and we're actually going to have a little fun with the shading. So I've changed the shading color to one solid color instead of using the multiply layer. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going back in and shading in these darker areas that needed a little extra help. The areas essentially that are too dark for the initial color and need to be darkened up even more. Um, well, let's see here. That might be too dark for the sweater, so I'm gonna have to pick a third color. Let's use this column. I don't use this column enough. Oh, that's too light. Okay, still too light. Gotta go way down here. Um, that may be too dark. There, I think that's a good color. And we'll just fill this area in. God, I wish I could remember which colors I'm actually picking. It would make this so much easier. But literally, as soon as I move away from the color palette, I completely forget what I've just done. There we go, that's a little better. And then I think the butterfly is gonna need to be a little lighter too. There we go. Okay, that still looks good. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing for the highlighting now. But instead of using my usual method like I just did, I'm gonna go ahead and randomly select colors as well. It's a little light, let's go down a bit. Still really light, down to here. All right, I think that's pretty good. All right, and I'm gonna hit all the areas that again, I usually hit when I'm highlighting something. These tend to be like the high points. And I don't know what you think of when someone mentions high points. I know that phrase is thrown around a lot without much clarification. But for me, 
the high points are two different things. One, it's where the bone is closest to the skin. So like the cheekbone, the chin, not the nose. There's no bone here. Uh, the knuckles, the collarbone, the shoulders, stuff like that. And then two, the literal high points, the points that are facing the most upwards or the most out. So that would be the nose, the lips, the shine on top of the lips, stuff like that. Basically anything that's going to have a little bit more of an advantage of catching the light. I'm, I'm dying, absolutely dying to know what this looks like. I feel like the shadows and highlights are gonna make this so interesting, especially after I decided not to do the multiply layer. I'm just so curious. Ooh, that's gonna have to be a different color. Beautiful. And I am doing this very quickly again. I've already colored this piece, the piece looks good. I'm not trying to spend a whole lot of time coloring the whole thing again. I think I'll use the same highlight that I used on the horns down on the sweater here. So they're around the same color or at least the same shade. I have no idea if they're the same color. Oh, this is still on screen. I don't want this on screen. I want this on normal. Oh no, I did it again. <laughs> okay, well, no wonder it was looking so weird when I was picking lighter colors. Let's do, ooh, not that white. Let's do like this color. There we go, that's pretty good. And then I just gotta fix the horns and the sweater again. There we go. I'm just so used to putting things on the blending modes that I completely forget when I'm not supposed to be doing that. Let's continue. Oh, you know what? Now that I have this going, I can definitely put uh, a shading layer on the little tank top. It's just gonna be a really, really dark gray. There we go. That's better. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. And I can do a lighter color as well, which is going to be a little bit of a lighter gray. And that will be our highlight. All right, and then last thing I'm gonna do on camera here is I'm gonna put what I call a glitter layer. And this is basically like any highlights that are glaringly white. I mostly only use it for the highlights in the eyes, but I am going to go to the top of the page here so that I get a really, really stark contrast to like the white of the eye that I put over here. All right, well, there's that. Let's just do a little bit of highlighting in this earring here, because it does look like I forgot that. Oops, the butterfly. Butterfly's already pretty bright though. I'm gonna have to pick a really, really light color to highlight it. There we go. All right, it's getting to the point that I can like literally feel waves of heat emanating from my body. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, let everything cool down for a little while. I'm going to do the shading and highlighting on the hair off camera, and I will be back for the final reveal I am so excited, I cannot wait. I'll see you in a minute. All right guys, I'm back. Um, I can see in color again, which is great, but I do still have a black and white filter essentially on this piece. So I can't see what this piece looks like yet. But oh my God, I, I'm, I'm so excited. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're gonna go ahead and reveal it. I don't, I don't even wanna reveal it. I'm so, oh. <sighs> Oh, oh, before we reveal it, what I did for the hair, because it's gradiented, um, I I drew all the shading and highlights on, and then I did add a gradient to the bottom of the hair to like darken those shadows and highlights just a little bit. So we should get a two-toned effect in there as well. I'm so nervous and so excited. Ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> Whoa! Wow! Oh my God. First of all, really was not expecting that level of saturation. Um, And am I crazy or does it like kind of go together. Like, I'm kind of thrilled with this. I did pick an orangey tone for the skin. I, I knew that's where the oranges were. Let me look at my color palette. Yeah, it is red to pink, so it is just a normal color palette. Um, I knew these were yellows. I knew these were blues. Wow. That is unbelievable. That is actually incredible. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna give myself a seizure if I do that. I'm absolutely blown away. Look at the, look at the earring. Oh, it looks so weird up close, but like it really, really works from this far away. Oh, and the eyes? What did I mix in there? It's like a brown and a green shade. Oh, this is so cool. Look at the highlight on that. I'm so unbelievably pleased with this. I think the only thing that's really throwing me off of it being like a really cohesive piece is the green background. I think the green background doesn't really belong, but man, oh man, that looks so cool. I was really expecting this to look like a hot pile of garbage, but I'm I'm so, so pleased. Um, I think I am going to try and edit a little YouTube short to go along with 
this one, which is going to have the actual colors in it instead of just being grayscale. So if you want to see me draw this painting with the colors shown here, you can go check out that short right now. Um, I'm also going to be posting this to my Instagram same time that this video goes live. So go check it out there as well. Wow, absolutely amazing. I think I might also post the speed draw of this to TikTok as well. So uh, keep an eye out for it there. And then I am also going to be streaming on Twitch tonight as well. I usually stream on Tuesdays and Fridays. And I'm actually trying out a new stream day on Wednesdays where I work on a webcomic that I've been working on for a while called, of course, Webcomic Wednesdays. And then before you go, I just want to give a little plug to my Patreon. I did just lower prices there. So you can sign up for as little as $3 a month and still get consistent content. The $3 a month tier is the something sketchy tier. So you get a lot of work in progress shots, a lot of warm up sketches that I do. And, and every now and then you'll get an exclusive sketch of something that I won't be posting to my YouTube or Instagram. Patreon is absolutely the best way to support me. So please go check it out if you have the time. I can be found under all of those socials with the name Threadwing, spelled same as it is here on YouTube. And make sure you hit that subscribe so you can find your way back here for next week's video. I love you guys so much. I love this so much. I cannot believe I love something with so much vibrant color in it. It's absolutely insane. All right, I will see you all next week. Bye.